And if he had fast hands at that time, it wasn't for doing geography homework. He wasn't a fighter in school. I mean, it's a boys' school, and, and you do get one or two who fight. Uh, and I don't have any, any memories of Shay fighting at all. Of course, I knew him as Jimmy, young James Neary. Um, and as I said, he went through very, very pleasantly. I have bumped into him uh, socially on one or two occasions. And on one occasion, he was telling me what his ambitions were in boxing. And he, he did say he, he hoped to be British champion, Irish champion, and even world champion. And I thought that was a bit fanciful at the time, but he's proved me wrong. I'm glad to say. I had to wait through school. Football was my sport, and um, my Devertonian. And my dad used to take me to all the games. And I was playing football for fun. I was, you know, I was enjoying the game, and I was enjoying it. I was learning myself. And then what it was is it started getting pushed into the direction of being a footballer, and told like by me, you know, by my father. I was told to right, come outside and play football and it started becoming a task. You know, when something starts becoming a task and um, my mum and dad split up, uh, then I just went away from football and when I was like 14, 15, started mix mixing with a few kids where we moved, we moved to a new place and I started going down the gym and boxing and I enjoyed it. Neary, seen training here aged 15, joins the Imperial Amateur Boxing Club and shows an instant aptitude for the sport under the careful guidance of his first coach, Tony Silvano. There's a fella down there called Tony Silvano, a nice fella, but he, he, he's not, he wasn't just like a trainer, he was like a, you, know, like you get somebody, you know, like Customato with, with Tyson, he, he wasn't just like, he was beyond a trainer, he was like, got into your mind and he, Oh, nice fella, and wherever you're going wrong. He was determined to do something, Jimmy. He sets his mind to it. Do it. But I used to say to him, if you're going to do something, think it out. That's the main thing, Jim. So you, you, you go on, you know, slug and think it. All right, you're going to take this guy. You might be a part of puncher. Yeah. But take him apart scientifically where he doesn't hit you. Young Neary is a quick learner and dedicated trainer from the outset of his first flirtations with the fight game. He takes some early punishment at the hands of older and heavier amateurs, but always comes back the next night looking for more. But he, he wants to know why. You, you shift this way, why? So you chill. You have to wear my left hand if you go that way. And he'd practice and practice. He'd make mistakes, mistakes, but he'd keep at it and he'd keep at it. Till he got it right. Neary's amateur grooming comes to an abrupt halt when he joins the King's Regiment in 1985. It's a case of unemployment outweighing his family's traditional Irish nationalist principles. At the time it was a job and I wouldn't like say I, I didn't enjoy joining the army, because, being in the army because I did enjoy the time I spent in the army. And I had the comradeship that you get from like being with the lads and look, watching each other's back and you know, things like that, you know, you, you, and the discipline, you wouldn't have got it anywhere else. I was representing the company at, at my weight, you know, and uh, I had four fights, four fights in four days, and uh, I won, like, the novices competition that year. I, I only four rounds, I boxed four rounds, won um, all first rounds, they were first round stoppages. But it was not special because I had boxed before and they hadn't boxed, but it was good, you know, because that was like an introduction to the battalion, you know, where, and then people get to know you through that, oh, everyone's okay with you then. After a four-year stint in the forces, Neary again has difficulty finding employment. Disillusioned and bored by unfulfilled days, he wanders into the Golden Gloves gym, where he first meets George Schofield, who's still one of his trainers today. Schofield, seen here in the blue, had been a crowd-pleasing fighter himself. He was raw as hell, raw, but uh, I spotted the thing right, right away in him after a few rounds, like he'd be walking through these fellas, even some of them were heavier, and he'd be walking through them, taking, taking punches, but uh, very discerning, very discerning, the first thing I noticed, and uh, very fit, very strong. And a, with a big ass, and it's uh, that's what's got him to where he, where he is today. Not the first night, uh, a couple of nights after, no one's, there was no one to, to spar with, 
En we zijn precies goed zeven te samen met jezelf, zo zo'n timber. Maar als de show ook goed, zo is het een body van ons was fijn. Als de show ook goed, de body van ons was. En eh, dat is het, 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 is het, dat is het, dat is het, dat is het, dat is Staat het brengen me aan zijn. Dat is natuurlijk helemaal niet aan zijn, te zijn, want ik sta ze kennen, ze zijn niet meer aan ze dan. Ja, ik ben hem dan, ik sta ze kennen, ze zijn zo, met niks hier, ze gaan ook achter de trap doen. En dan hebben we won nog eens een amateur, ik had die RRA finals en die ABA's got beat twice by the same lad, like called Lee Rimmy. Really classy lad, he was, good fight, he. Um, but they were, you know, still exciting, the fights were exciting. I think people, when people watch, Watch the fights, the, you know, always oh, exciting. George, like George Goldfield, he always said, you make a better pro than an amateur. Backed by businessman Brendan Devine, Neary turns pro in 1992, trained by George Schofield above the Claremont pub, but soon moves down the road to the famous Everton Red Triangle gym. His pro debut comes in his spiritual home, the Everton Park Sports Centre, against fellow debutant and martial arts expert Simon Ford. But the pro boxing game is a very different world, as Ford soon realises. First and black belt in karate. But this, of course, an entirely different sport. Ford, short and stocky. There he's had the benefit of sparring with the likes of Andy Holligan, I understand. Ooh, good stiff jab there. And uh, Ford on the floor here from a jab in the first round. So Simon Ford on the floor from a str very stiff straight left. Under pressure here now for the rest of the round from Neary. Oh, and a left hook. And up a cut. Simon Ford managed by. So I'll get to that later. Oh, left hook. And uh, has gone. Well, he's up at eight this time, that's six, seven, eight, and I don't think he wants to know. Well, a first round win for Shane Neary. Early progress is impressive. In only his fourth fight, he appears on the popular fight night programme, boxing a future British champion, Chris Saunders. Shea's seriously overmatched for his experience, but fortunately, no one tells him. successful with that straight right hand lead if only he would learn to finish on the hook oh, he's done well there and obviously Shane Erie a good verdict well received by this crowd as you say Jim what this this fellow's going to go on to be a real attraction the way it's going well done Realising Neary needs specialist coaching to progress, George Schofield introduces him to the highly regarded local fight guru, Charles Atkinson Sr., the man who had launched John Conti's career. After Conti headed for the bright lights of London, Atkinson had avoided local boxers, preferring instead to concentrate on overseas talent in his secluded Kirby gymnasium. The great Azuma Nelson was just one of Atkinson's young protégés. My father was, you know, a strict disciplinarian, but uh, he responded to people who would train hard. Shane Neary, from day one, was a fitness fanatic. And of course, they went together. And um, from there on in, things just got better for Shay. But Mr. A was like, you know, teaching me, a very knowledgeable man, you know. He was an old fella. No, he wouldn't take, um, no, you know, no slacking or, Nothing like that, and he's very disciplined. If you, you know, he takes you, if you don't want to do it, just as well. He wouldn't have no, no ifs, buts, or ands about it. My father, 